Hi guys, welcome to uh, the fifth installment of our Denim Talk series. Today I'm here with uh, Thomas from Denim Hunters. Uh, Thomas uh, is also the co-writer of this, uh, this awesome book called Blue Blooded. And um, today uh, Thomas and I are going to talk a little bit about uh, Denim Hunters. We go way back actually. Um, when Denim Hunters was a blog at first, you covered our first crowdfunder back in 2013. Um, since then, the whole concept has changed a little bit, I guess. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what was Denim Hunters and what is it now? Yeah, sure. So, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, always a good good time. Well, Denim Hunters started, I mean, I started it because I wanted to learn about denim. Uh, essentially, I was spending a lot of time researching what, that, what denim was uh, back in 2010. Um, I was working in I was working in retail, um, and I was selling jeans. So I I had to explain to my customers what they are and, and you know how you take care of them. And at the time, that was when you know we were told not to wash our jeans a lot and wait six months and you yeah. will get great fades and all of that. So essentially, I was like, why, you know, why is that? I was, I was spending a lot of time online, um, not too much in forums like you were. Uh, so in, in forums they are, and you know, at least they were, and I'm sure they still are quite, you know, it's, it's opinionated. Yeah, it's people's really. opinions yeah. and, and, and I'm quite shy and so I didn't want to stick my neck out. Okay. Um, but I've, I've, I thought then, okay, maybe I could just, if I do my own thing, uh, that, that could be something else because I can control it more, you know, uh, mm. of course people can comment and say you're an idiot, but you know, I, I also like the research part, um. Uh, yeah, you like to write. I like that to write. You've always liked writing stuff or well, yeah. researching and writing about it. I right? mean, I so when I started the blog, I was I was sort of in between educations. I had finished my bachelor's degree and I, I was working full time in a store. Actually, my uh, sister in law she told me in the autumn of two thousand ten, "Why don't you? I mean, you spend all this time. Why don't you make something out of it instead?" Uh, so she basically convinced me to start the blog because. I didn't want to do that either. I, you know, blogs at the time were a little different. It was, it was a bit more like Instagram is today, actually, you know, yeah. look at me kind of, um, I didn't want to do that. I purposely put myself quite far behind, you know, yeah. I didn't put my face up there. It was about denim more. And for the first, almost the first year from like, I launched it in January, 2011 until Christmas, it was in Danish. And, oh. You know, we, we're only 5 million people. Uh, and not a lot of them are into raw denim. What, I mean, what made you switch to, to English? Did you get a feedback or was it like yeah, your own realization? I mean, I, I sort of figured out denim is, it's, it's global, you know, yeah. raw denim, it's, it's such a global phenomenon. So, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, I was starting to meet people that were not Danish. So it's basically, okay, why don't I just do that? Um, at the beginning I was quite nervous about it in a way because yeah, English is not my first language, so um, I had to, you know, cross that barrier of okay, you know, I have to write. Yeah, in. we all have that problem. Yeah, though. I mean, if if we <laughs> if, if you're not a native speaker, I guess yeah. we all share that uh, to some extent. So, so yeah, that was 2011. I was um, I was just running it as a hobby project, you know. And when did it? It when was like the first sort of milestone for denim Where did it, where did where did you basically realize? Okay, this is really something more. Um, I, I, when did you real realize you'd explore it more? Well, I so. guess I started going to to trade shows, and that was in, uh, in the days of bread and butter in Berlin. Mm -hmm. And we were invited there. I think two thousand thirteen. I mean, Denim Hunters was invited to bread and butter in the log area to be sort of in a media area together with uh, with clutch and lightning and uh, so that was a big step that probably, was a big step yeah. because we, we we had a booth but we didn't have like a, a business i mean we were just it was not you're just a bunch of like fans and yeah nerds yeah, yeah. so we were there to write about yeah and interview people and things like that yeah so yeah. but i mean that was that was i think uh, what, a, a milestone for sure yeah um and it started getting more and more serious and we actually launched a web shop in 2014 
I believe it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, because now um, the thing that you you started, Denim Hunters, yeah. uh, together with, with those partners, it evolved into like um, a serious platform, let's yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, that was more like uh, uh, to, con to, con to consumers, yes, let's say. Exactly. And then you r realized, okay, this is not something that I want to continue with. I have other ideas. Yeah, I right? mean, can you can you explain that exactly? I mean, um, one of the ideas I had was that I wanted to write a book, um, not to make money. That that you know, uh, writing books about denim is not something. And that you know, and that turned out to be this book. That turned out to be that book. Okay. Um, um, so you know, I put together like this proposal that you make that you send out to publishers, and I was actually I was about to do that when I was contacted by Gestalten. Okay, and I, that's the publisher. That's of the your publisher, book. Okay. and yeah. Funny thing is, I, I mean, I didn't know them before, and I hadn't sent them a proposal, <laughs> but but they had the same project basically, and they wanted me to sort of head it up, uh, because of denim hunters. So it was like, okay, destiny. We went from like idea to published book in nine ten months. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's uh, two hundred and fifty six pages, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, half of them I wrote, and they're quite, you know you know detail in terms of you know I go, I go quite deep uh, so for me it was the reason I wanted to do it was basically to learn even more you continued with the brand name denim hunters yes the other guys continued with a new uh plat platform called rope die yes um that meant that denim hunters turned into something new the idea that I had was that I wanted it to be about education I mean from my own experience, I've I'd learned that when you know what you're talking about when you're selling a product, it's much easier. Yeah. It's it's more fun. You it's better for the customer, you know, you you're more trustworthy. Um yeah, so and and I saw that people, especially in retail, they often don't know a lot about the, the products they're selling, especially when it comes to, to denim and jeans. Yeah. So my idea was okay. How can how can I help fix that? Um, and that's basically the idea of the Denim Hunters Academy, which is a membership site that has courses in there that you can get access to through a subscription. And you changed from B to C to B to B. Yeah, I so mean, you're focusing on bigger companies like. Those are your customers, brands, brands, uh, not the consumer. No, I mean it's 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 nice for the consumer as well, but for for yeah. for some for a niche of consumers yeah. that are like us, yeah. really into it, yeah, for sure, it's still relevant. You know, yeah. it's not that the site says it would be anything like this is only for B two B. It's not like that, but it's still publicly available on my blog. But of course, it's targeted, you know, at a specific, you know. Uh, a specific group which is people in retail that's the primary target audience yeah and then the secondary would be designers developers people who work in in marketing in, in sales in you know with brands with mills suppliers like that yeah uh, because all of the big retailers the big brands they will have something like this internally what I'm offering is like an independent platform that's basically a sort of general uh, course into denim you start with the basics and then you can get as deep as as you like well basically. yeah i mean it's essentially like the my book but yeah. in video form okay i should say that you know of course the the course is video based so it has um it has five modules mm -hmm. in total 25 lessons it's around two hours if you just watch it through and i purposely made it quite you know compressed because again the primary target audience young guys and girls that work in retail that you know they might not want to read a, a big fat book but if they can watch like a five minute video yeah. about a specific topic then it might be a little easier yeah um so so it has five modules the, the denim 101 course starts with history then there's how you make the fabric the denim then it's how you make the garment or you know the processes of that the defining features such as like the rivets the patches and so on and then the fifth and last module is essentials about you know, customer guidance when you're selling denim and jeans. So that would be you know the washing, the fit, you know those essential features uh, that you uh, that you need to know. 
Okay, so Denim Denim 101 is like your core product yes. at the moment. Yes. You also still uh, write a lot of articles. I, um, I'm a weekly blog. I mean, I do a yeah. weekly blog as well. Uh, and and that's yeah, uh, that's where I can ex explore things as yeah. well and and uh, and write about you know relevant topics that I think is relevant. And that's available for everyone, right? That's a, the blog is is freely. I mean, yeah. you can just go in. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's good to know. Like for everyone who just wants to know more about uh, about the general stuff, then there's there's so much interesting. Uh, there's so many interesting articles yeah. still on your on your on your page For sure. and everything and that's I think that is the most important thing about everything that you do is that it's all about education getting the information from the source to the end consumer right yeah I mean it's a that's that's what that's what what it's all about in the, the end the key yeah exactly because so often information gets lost along yeah. you know uh, yeah. the different you know, so you have the, the, the designer and then there's someone who sells it and then he sells it to a retailer and yeah. then the retailer has to explain to his staff. Yeah. At the end, there's almost nothing left. Yeah. But it's also, it's not only about, you know, product knowledge, you know, knowing. It's also about how you use it because you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't know how to sort of put it into the context that is relevant for the person you're talking to, the person yeah. you're servicing in a store, yeah. So if you walk into a store, the the sales guy or girl should ideally, you know, go could go quite deep in terms of, you know, the details of the product. But if someone that wouldn't know very much and maybe you wouldn't really care about all the details, you need you need you, to know. You're le you're learning the 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 shop staff to to identify the type of customer. Do I need to completely geek out about salvage yeah. or is it is this guy or girl just looking for a nice pair of jeans? Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I think that wraps it up for now. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, know more about Thomas's work, uh, you can go to his website. We put it in the, uh, in the link description uh, below. Um, well, thanks again. And uh, see you hopefully next time. Ciao.